we want to learn few tips that how to cultivate a family safe and loving. One of the problem that I see, you know, in our communities that most of the time we have very, very shallow understanding of things. And because of that, we have to pay a big price. Shallow understanding of deen, that deen is just a name of, you know, praying salah, paying zakah, while deen has a bigger purpose and meaning. So that's why we are not able to fulfill our responsibility as a Muslim and we don't see fruits of 1.7 billion Muslims all around the world. Same thing is about the concept of family. Family has a bigger picture, bigger meaning than just having husband and wife and kids and letting them go for medical school, engineering school, IT, this, that. And focus is just to make them somebody from worldly perspective. I will remind you the saying of Hazrat Amar bin Alas when he sees his wife feeding his child and he says to her don't feed your child like you are feeding anybody rather feel like that you are helping one abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and once he will be a grown-up man and he will fulfill his duties as a servant, as a abd of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this will become sadhqai chariya for you. So having this concept that we are raising our kids so that our kids will be a better Muslim, a better human being. So they will be our legacy, they will be our sadhqai chariya. The second thing which I will remind quickly and I will move forward is the saying of Hazrat Ali ta'ala anho that don't raise your kids the way you were raised because the challenges of your kids demands, requirements of their time is different. So raise them according to their needs and requirements. Remember one thing you never know the child in your home he is just one child for you but that same child can become Salahuddin Ayubi can become Sultan Muhammad can become a Muslim Einstein can become anything he has all the potential right there so you might be raising a child that he might make a big difference you know in Ummah you never know so think big about your, your child and raise him according to that expectation that you have with your child there are two things which I will share with you that if you want a happy family do these two things in your family and I hope I have sisters here as well so sisters can understand how the, this functionality of a home works if we do two, two things in our family Wallahi I can tell you that your family your home in this dunya will become Jannah number one make decisions 
with your own mind. Don't make decisions because of peer pressure or what people will say. This is one of the biggest problem I have seen in our communities that we make decisions based on what people will say. Not based on what my mind is saying, what is best for me and what should I do for the betterment of my family. Rather, we all play in pressure and we complain about our kids that our kids, you know, they do things because of peer pressure. We also do things because of peer pressure. The title changes, the name changes, demand changes, requirement changes, but we all do the very same thing what we don't expect from our child to do. The second point, if you want to live a happy life, live within your own means. Whatever Allah has given you, rely on that. You know, I was listening to one of the lectures about modernity, this modern time. One of the problem of the modern time is that we are consuming the future of our future generation. I have no right to compromise the future of my future generations. All nations, if you go, America has loan of 23 trillion dollars. This does not belong to the generation today. It belongs to the generation of tomorrow. Same concept in homes, we take loan. When you go out of your means, that means that you are actually consuming your future which on which you have no right. So try to live within your own means. And here I will tell to sisters one thing. If wallahi, if the wife, if the wife decides, sits down with her husband and says to him, in this house, even if we will get food once a day, but we will live within our means and we will only acquire the halal risk. We will feed our kids only halal risk. Does not matter if I live in a one bedroom apartment. Does not matter if we drive a very old car. Does not matter if I will make new clothes for my kids once a year, does not matter if we will not use brand name, brand name stuff in our home. But the thing which matters is that we will live in our own means. And I have shared with you the story of Hazrat Fatima, Razi Allah Ta'ala Anha before, that when once Hazrat Ali finds her in a very bad situation, like her hands were, like she has worked very hard all her life. Who could be better than Fatima Razila Ta'ala Anha? Who could be better than her? No one can even imagine to be better than Hazrat Fatima Razila Ta'ala Anha. The reason I'm reminding you that story again, when Hazrat Ali sees her in a very bad health condition, and he tells her that, Fatima, why you did not tell me about your condition before? And Hazrat Fatima says, which every father should say to her daughter when she is getting married, that when you go in your husband's house, don't put extra burden on his shoulder. Hazrat Fatima Razila Ta'ala Anha says to Hazrat Ali, Allah ta'ala, no. Ali, when I was getting married with you, my father advised me one thing, that Ali is a poor man. Don't ask him anything which will put him in unnecessary difficulty and burden. Wallahi, our happiness is in our hand. We feel like most of us that if we have a bigger house or bigger car or bigger bank balance, we will be happy. 
That's not true. And this all is in the hand of my sister. Wives, if they sit down and decide this, and husband, most of the time I have seen, they, they do things which they are not supposed to because of the pressure coming from their own home. I will move forward. Most of, you know, families, they ask me that when our child will be mature enough that we can talk to them about things which are more serious. I will ask you to pay attention to this, please. According to the human psychology, according to the current data, they say the maturity of the brain of your child depends of number of quality hours you have spent on your child. Your child could be two years old, but since you have spent quality time with that child, quality time means quality conversation, quality discussion. And remember one thing, my brothers and my sister, the best thing in your house is not the TV you have or the furniture you have or the car or big house you have. Wallahi, the best and the most beautiful thing in your house is the discussion happening among the family members in the house. That is the most important and most beautiful thing of the house. The discussion you are having on a dining table with your family, with your kids. So this is very important that we have to understand my brothers and my sisters. So I was telling you the quality time, quality time reading books to your child, quality time engaging them in the discussions that, that, are, that are more serious. And I can give you one example. And I am a witness of it. Wallahi, I shared this story in last week, Ikna Convention, and everybody was surprised that I witnessed two-year-old, two-year-old child, when his grandfather was leaving home. This two-year-old child tells to grandpa, Grandpa, don't forget to read your duas and drive carefully. And I was surprised this two-year-old child is telling grandfather when he is leaving a home that don't forget to read your duas and drive carefully. Then I looked into that family history and story. Then I realized the thing which what's happening differently in this family is conversation, discussion, engaging child, to listen to books, not spending time on a screen, on watching cartoons, four hours a day, three hours a day. Wallahi, we should try to move our kids. And I can give you one slogan, from screen to green, from screen to green. Take your child for a walk, go to the park, let them play. We should claim the childhood of our children. Because, you know, the biggest name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in child is a curiosity that he wants to explore. And if you don't provide him a finished product, you know, we, we hand over them a toy, which is already finished product, has from beginning to end, everything is there. After a little bit of time, he gets bored. He wants new toy. According to psychology, you should let him explore. Give him a pen and a copy. Let him play in outside a garden. Let him play with the trees and flowers and so he can explore. So his brain can get stimulated. Because curiosity, finding solution to things, inventing new things, finding new things, this is the biggest nema Allah has given to every child. And we as a parent, we try to suppress that by sending them to school very early age, 
or letting them just read this book or just try to do this math. Wallahi, we limit the capacity, the potential of our child. Let him have open options. Open options. So the key that I want to communicate here, my brothers and my sisters, is have productive quality conversation with your child. Then you will see the five-year-old child will speak like a 15-year-old. And then you will be able to assess your child that when is the best time for me to discuss things that I want to discuss with my child. Try to create love of books in the heart of your child. From very early age, create love of books in the heart of your child from very early age. Read books even for seven month old, 10 month old, one year old. Sit down and tell them the story from the books so they can create this love of books in their heart. You know, the next step which I want to spend a little bit more time is about relationship with your family and with your children. And before I will move forward and I will focus on that topic, I want to say one phrase that I'm talking about having safe and loving family. The title of this talk should be for brothers that I will request them, please respect and love mother of your child. I will say it again because this is the key of safe and loving family that please respect and love mother of your child. Because if you will miss this point and you will humiliate the mother of your child, if you will put her down, if you will not respect her, Wallahi, your kids, they may not be able to say anything until they are 18 year old, but you will see the reaction. And I have seen the reaction. And I see that reaction every day. Every day. It settles in the mind of a child that my father does not love and respect my mother. No matter what you can bring to your child, you can go to moon, and brings moon down for your child. Go and buy BMW and Mercedes for him. Go and buy the biggest business of the world for him. Provide all the luxuries for him. But end of the day, he will not respect you. And this is a written, written thing on the stone that if you really want your child to respect you in the future, then learn how to respect and love the mother of your child. About relationship that I want to talk, you know, there are three levels of relationship. Number one is we call repo. Repo is just an introduction that I know Asif Bhai and Asif Bhai knows my name. Okay, I know Yunus Bhai, Yunus Bhai knows my name. That's called repo. You just know, you know, I know brother Noor and he knows, you know, me. So just introduction of names and faces. There is another level of ta'alluq, of relationship we call relationship. Relationship is more than rapport, means that not only we know each other, but we know that where I live or what I have studied, little bit more introduction. Like a family member knows about father, that my father is a doctor, he works there, he goes in the morning, he comes in the evening. So more than repo, little bit more introduction that we know each other, okay. There is a third level of relationship and that is the main focus of my discussion today. And that is called bonding. Bonding between parents and child. Bonding means togetherness. Bonding means that you know each other's liking and disliking. Bonding means that you want to spend time with each other. 
Bonding means that you want to share everything of your life with each other. Bonding means if I don't see you for a day, I get restless and I call you 10 times that where are you? I have not seen you. These days, you know, you might have seen father is gone for a month and child even doesn't care. Okay, where father is gone, they don't even miss him. He's gone, he's gone. And the reason is that we are lacking in developing this bonding. And inshallah, in a minute, I will suggest few points how we can create this bonding. Wallahi, this bonding is such a powerful thing. It's such a powerful thing that if you want to discipline your child, the child with whom you have developed that bonding, you don't have to raise your voice. You don't have to shout. You don't have to spank. You don't have to be physical with that child. If you just go quiet and don't talk to that child, that is enough punishment for him to make him restless. And that can only happen that if I have really truly invested my quality time with child and I have developed that bonding with the child. If we really develop that bonding with our child, one of the ways is that you should be available when your child needs you the most. That is point number one. That you should make yourself available when your child needs you the most. And your child should know that if he will need you, then the priority number one for you will be your child. Not your business, not your meeting, not your traveling, not your pleasure, nothing else. When it comes to the need of a child, then you are there to help you know, your child. Second thing I have suggested to you about that quality time, the third thing about reading books together, many times, Wallahi, what I have seen in family relationship and bonding, there might be many occasions when something happens in your family and a lot of time I have seen that you don't even have to reply. Just one smile of your face is the answer. For many questions, they get asked in the home. So just a smile is good enough. You don't have to get in too much into things. Two things which I will say they don't do, which will demolish this whole image and picture of bonding. Two things never do with your child. Number one, don't provide conditional love to your child. Don't provide conditional love to your child. Always let your child know that you love him unconditional, no matter what. Don't put restrictions that I will love you if you will have A grade. I will love you if you will become Hafiz of Quran. I will love you if you will become doctor. I will love you if you do this, this, this. No. For a child to have this confidence that my father loves me no matter what. My mother loves me no matter what. What it does. If your child will be in any trouble or if he will fail, he is going to come back to you. But if you have created walls, hindrances, obstacles between you and your child, if he will fail or if he will not be able to attain the benchmarks you have set for him, then he is going to try to run away from you. He is not going to come back to you. And I have told many brothers and sisters in my khutbah, I have seen today that if this communication door, window gets closed between parents and child and child does any mistake and mistakes can happen with, from anybody. You know, a lot of times we expect our child 
to become like we are today. We became what we are today after the journey of 60 years. He is going to do silly mistakes like we did when we were of their age. But if communication door is open, as I said, he will come to you. Otherwise, what's happening, what I'm seeing, they do mistake, some foolish thing they did online. There are people to exploit their mistake. There are so many fabricated things they create, you know, in, in Pakistan, all, over, all around the world. They develop some video of your child with doing something which he has never done. But these people, they hijack your child. And now they are trying to blackmail your child. And the child is scared. If my father will know this or my mother will know this, then where will I go? And these people, they take advantage of our kids. Wallahi, I have seen kids doing suicide because of the fear of their parents, because they don't know, they didn't do anything. They did not do what they are getting blamed for. But since that communication door is closed, they are scared and worried. So give your child unconditional love that no matter what happens to you, you can always count on us. Second thing that we should not do, and that is controlling environment in the home, that you control over supervision, over instruction. You know, we want to monitor every little thing of our child. Well, I, that, that's, that's put you in a lot of tension and pressure. You put on yourself more responsibility that, than you can, what you can fulfill. Second, it kills the potential of your child. Potential of your child. He will never get, you always pamper him. You always spoon feed him. You don't, don't let him fall, get hurt and walk on his own feet. So try not to have controlling environment that too much control on a child is not a healthy way to raise your child. So these are few things about the bonding that I wanted to discuss with you. There is one thing which I want to share with you and that is, is so true from the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wallahi, if you don't practice anything I said today. If you just learn the one thing I am trying to share with you in a second, if you just practice this one thing, your life of this dunya will become Jannah. And your house will be one of the best houses on this planet. And that is emotional intelligence. Look at the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He never he never belittled anybody. He never humiliated anybody. He never said anything which can affect the emotions of the person. He was always very sensitive. Listen to me. He was always very sensitive about the feelings of the people. About the feelings of the people. Emotional intelligence is that you are sensitive about the feelings of others. You don't say things, you don't do things which can make them feel bad. And it applies all across. Your wife has feelings. Your kids, they have feelings. Well, a three-year-old child has his feelings. And try to insult him and then see how he feels. He, he cannot react, he cannot, he may not be able to do anything, but respecting each other's feelings. We say things and we know what I am about to say is going to hurt the feeling of my child, is going to hurt the feeling of my wife, is going to hurt the feeling of my parents, is going to hurt the feeling of my co-worker. Lekin we still say, because we don't care. So having this sense of sensitivity about the feeling of others is one of the key to have beautiful 
relationship. My brothers and my sisters, there is another thing mentioned in Quran in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Nisa, Surah Taghabun, and Surah Hashar, and many other surahs. And we had our halqa yesterday, and the brothers who were there, I discussed this yesterday in my halqa. Just quickly, I want to, because this is one of the disease. This disease not only affects our relationship, it affects our businesses, it affects every aspect of our life. When Quran says, Bad Auz Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim, Wa Mai Yu Kashoha Nafsihi Fa Ulai Kahumul Muflihun. Quran says, If you are saved from this disease of Shoha Nafsi, Shoha Nafsi is stinginess, Shoha Nafsi is greediness. English does not have the beautiful translation of this word Shoha Nafsi. Urdu has. Urdu mein hum kehte hai tang dili. Dil ki tangi. Ye, this is the disease which basically is the key of many diseases. Quran has used this Shoha Nafsi disease for people who are holding their mal. They are not doing nifaq in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Quran has used this in general terms. Shoa nafsi is not just about mal. Actually, this is a disease of heart. Not only that person will hold the mal, he also lacks, deprives his surroundings from the culture of acknowledgement and appreciation. This person is greedy, stingy, is from all aspects. He will not acknowledge the good work of people. His wife is doing so much. She is not only taking care of him. She is taking care of his father, his mother. She is taking care of so many things, his kids. But he does not acknowledge what good work she is doing. He is always just demanding and demanding and demanding. Same person has this disease not only not only acknowledging not appreciating people doing good work around him his co-workers are doing good work his kids are doing so many good things his family members are doing so many good things but because of this disease of shoha nafsi he is not able to appreciate so this disease affects not only financial aspect but your businesses because the person who has this disease, he cannot make big decisions. He, can, he cannot take bold steps. He always wants to take baby steps. Because from inside he is afraid, he is scared, he doesn't feel secure. So this mentality of shoha nafsi, stinginess and greediness is affecting all dimensions of his life. Including his family and wallahi that because of his problem because of his problem or her problem i will not say just brother sister as well because of their problem everybody around them suffers everybody around them suffer look at the environment of appreciation and acknowledgement the best example is prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he used to give nickname. He loved to give nickname to people. By giving nickname, he was actually giving them title. He was putting, you know, crown on their head. They were so excited and happy when Prophet ﷺ is going to give them the nickname. Nickname to shine their strength, their qualities. So if we have environment of acknowledgement and appreciation, Wallahi, this will increase the productivity. This will not only change the environment of your house, but your wife will be willing to go extra mile to do things. You as a husband will be willing to go extra mile to do things because there is somebody in the home who is understanding, appreciating and acknowledging what I do. My brothers and my sisters, 
inshallah i will move towards concluding my you know talk as i said in the beginning about teaching our kids love of book at the same time try to teach them love of every human being as a muslim we should teach our child to love everybody regardless of his religion regardless of his financial status regardless of his color regardless of his background as a muslim this is the basic teaching of our deen to love every human being the reason is we are dai we are ambassadors of islam we have to fulfill the responsibility what anbiya of allah subhanahu wa taala have done to save humanity from the wrath of allah subhanahu wa taala to save every single human being from disobedience of allah subhanahu wa taala and we cannot perform this duty until and unless we love everybody when you love and they will understand that you love them then they will open their heart for you and me La last thing and then i'll conclude inshallah you know we complain about social media we complain about many challenges of today you know one of one of the thing which we are lacking these days maulana maududi rahmatullah alay in one of his book he has written up until 18th century most of the brothers are from india pakistan bangladesh and this is information that i want to share with you maulana maududi says rahmatullah alay that up until 18th century until british they came and conquered bengal bengal of india historians the european historians the british historians have written this thing not muslim historians not muslim writers not muslim scholars british historians have written this thing that it was very hard to find any muslim who could be stealing you will not find muslim stealing you will not find muslim lying you will not find muslim up until 18th century in that part of the world that he is cheating that you have put trust on him and he will cheat 93% of the muslim population the literacy rate among muslim before british came was 93% my brothers and my sister the reason one of the main reason that we have gone so far behind is that we have lost one institution in our communities in our families and in our societies and that institution was institution of murabbi having somebody as a mentor mentor could be somebody that you can go and consult somebody who can give you word of wisdom somebody you can share your problem with him and he can find you the best solution possible the person that you can sit down and he can console you he can comfort you he could be the imam of the masjid he could be your father or mother he could be your brother or sister he could be any community member but try to have mentor in your life we all are trying to have a solo flight that i think i am self sufficient i can take care of myself i don't need anybody wallahi because of that we all most of the time we fail or we compromise on many things so developing this culture of mentorship you should become mentor for many people you should sit down and talk to people console them sometimes they just need you know little shoulder they just need little help they just need little smile they just need few words of empathy so developing this culture of mentorship you know in our communities and the condition is that whoever you make mentor then listen to him 
then follow what he is suggesting so that we can see the fruits inshallah i pray to allah subhanahu wa taala that he gives us tawfiq you know after iman the most beautiful thing is your family and your kids and if you have beautiful home beautiful family you will see that you will be able to maximize your potential your productivity you will be a better person outside home but if you are suffering in your home you will not be able to perform outside so it's very important your your home should be in peace your home should be in sakina your home should be with tranquility and that everybody in that home is on the same page wa akhir da'wana alhamdulillah rabbil alamin assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh